I wanted to talk to you today about breaking pottery. As potters, we've all broken pottery. Or if you haven't, you're going to eventually. Especially with primitive pottery, is breaking pottery really part of the process? Far more so than, say, a standard studio potter does. You need to come to grips with that. But also you have to know what to do with that broken pottery because you're gonna accumulate some. So today I'm gonna to talk about three things you can do with broken pottery. If you saw my video last week, you saw where I broke a couple pots in a firing. This is the biggest one, this was the biggest loss because it's really a big, beautiful pot that I spent a lot of hours on. So it kinda hurts, you know, to lose the pot, even though I've broken enough pots that at this point it doesn't, you know, really break my heart the way it used to. Uh, it's still, you know, it's a shame to lose that much work. Now, because this was so broken on the bottom, I thought for sure that eventually these pieces would start falling out. But here it is a week or more later, and I've handled it quite a bit, and those pieces are still in place. So I think what I'm going to do is just put some glue in those cracks, because I think this pot can withstand it. It's got enough strength around the rim here where it's still holding together that, you know, these pieces are staying in place. So I bought myself some super glue, and I'm going to get it down in those cracks and try to kind of repair this, because I think... It's still a beautiful pot. The colors are great, both inside and out, and I think this would look really great sitting on somebody's shelf. And I can sell this pot still. Of course, I wouldn't charge full price for it. I'd give somebody a discount because it's broken, but I think this pot will look great somewhere because the break is on the bottom. Somebody can have this sitting on a shelf and nobody even has to know it's broken. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try to fix this pot. Super glue is a great and inexpensive way to fix broken ceramics. Now I got the gel super glue. So this is better for filling in these cracks because it's not gonna wanna run. These cracks go all the way through. So hopefully the idea is if I squeeze that gel into those gaps, most of it, or at least some of it, should stay in the gap and not run through. And this will give it some more durability so that somebody can display it and not worry about it falling apart. Oh, my fingers are getting sticky. Doggone it. This is the smaller pot that broke in that firing. And I could glue that as well. It does have some cracks, although they're not as bad as the other one. I think I want to refire this. This pot got kind of smothered in the firing. All those coals kind of dumped on top of it. So it didn't oxidize good on the outside as much as the large one did. So I'm going to try refiring this. And then if it survives, I'll try gluing that. Ancient people in the Southwest used to crack their pottery all the time because they used this earthenware for daily use, for carrying water, for cooking, for storing things in, for all kinds of things. And so because it's earthenware, you know, it's fragile. And so it would break frequently. And we can find evidence of that in the archeological record where they would have cracked pottery that they wanted to continue to use. Now they didn't have super glue, but they would actually drill holes on either side of the crack and tie it together with sinew, which would bind it really tight. And so that way they could get a lot more use out of a cracked pot. And so a lot of times, not only will you find these sherds with the holes drilled in them where they had fixed a crack, but also you can find them in caves where that sinew binding is still there. But the, the big pot that I just glued that is a decorative pot. That isn't a pot that somebody would use for something. What about a pot that's for a practical application? Well, obviously, if it's cracked and glued together, you're not going to cook out of it. But you could still get use, potentially, out of a broken and glued together pot. Here's an example. This is one of the pookies I sell on my website. In the mail, uh, the woman that made these pookies for me mailed them to me because she lives on the other side of the country. In the mail, this pot, or this pookie, cracked. Now. I use pookies in my workshops all the time that are cracked and glued together. Some of these are really old pookies I've had for years and I just keep, when they break, I just keep gluing them back together. So they're like Frankenstein pookies, all put together out of bits and pieces. They look terrible, but they work. And so the same goes for this. This one isn't broken in two, but I think what I'd like to do is try to break it in two so that I can glue it back together because I don't want those bits of glue on the outside here. I want a really good, strong binding for this one because I want to use it. So let me see if I can break this in two. Not something I usually do to pookies. The crack is right there. Can you see that? Look at it. It's growing. There it is. I broke it. So now I'm going to glue it together good. I'm getting to the bottom of this tube, so I'm having to push real hard to get it to come out.
Another thing you can do with broken pottery is like this Kiva jar that broke in that same firing, just arrange it on the shelf in such a way that the break doesn't show. So this spall was on the bottom. And if I set this pot on the shelf in such a way that the spall doesn't show, what does it matter? Again, if I sold this, I wouldn't sell it for full price, but it makes a great gift. It makes a great decoration in my home, or I could sell it at a reduced price. This is something else you should keep in mind if some of your pottery breaks a little bit or has a crack on one side, as long as you arrange it so that crack isn't showing, does the crack really exist? If a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? So now let's talk about catastrophic failure. Pots that break so bad that they can't be repaired. I have a whole bucket full of broken pots. Some of them are ones that broke in the firing. Some of them were pots that broke accidentally afterward. Uh, there was one last year where one of these lights I use in my studio got knocked over, hit this workbench, knocked a pot on the floor, and it broke. I mean, pots break all kinds of ways. Uh, and some of them were just pots that came out so badly that I wish they were broken, so I did. And all is not lost because I have the old trusty corn grinder here. And what I do is I grind these bits of broken pottery up to make temper. So if you don't know about wild clay, I go out and dig my own clay in the desert and that clay has to have about 20% non-plastic material added to it. It can be sand, volcanic ash, it can even be manure. But one of the best things to use for temper is ground up ceramic material, also called grog. So I break it up into small enough bits like this that it'll run through my corn grinder. I put it in here, I grind it up, and this goes right into my clay bodies to help make new pots. So that's a great use for it. In fact, I have a big box that an archeologist gave me a few months ago of prehistoric sherds. Sherds that the archeologists had already kind of analyzed, didn't have any use for, they were gonna throw them away. They gave them to me, and I'm gonna use those for temper as well. Although the sherds I'm grinding up right now are not prehistoric, these are mine. I even made a video a few years ago where my son and I threw pottery off the roof. If you want to see that, I'll link it in the doobly doo. I think the main point I want to leave you with today is not to be afraid of breaking pottery. If you're just getting started in primitive pottery, you're going to break a lot of pottery over the time that you're doing it. And every time you break pottery, look at it as a learning experience an opportunity for you to refine your craft and realize that none of that pottery is gonna to go to waste. It's either gonna be repairable, like the pots I glued together today, or you can grind it up and turn it into temper, which will go right back into your clay body and help you continue on your path towards becoming a better potter. I appreciate you watching today. I'll catch you next time.